I'm Carrie Jordan, Director of PLM Cloud Product Marketing at Oracle. I'm here with Roddy Martin, our Vice President of Supply Chain Management Thought Leadership, and we're here to discuss the future of PLM and supply chain, the role cloud plays, and the impact on business and profitability. Roddy, thanks so much for being here. It's a pleasure, Kerry. I look forward to giving some spotlight to PLM and part of the supply chain because I think that's really starting to come together in industry. That's excellent. I really do want to hear your thought leadership around PLM and supply chain and um, the changing rules of the industry, especially around innovation, design and development and, and supply chain as a whole, especially given your background and expertise. You were an analyst with AMR and Gartner now here with Oracle. You also have industry expertise in uh, organizations like SAB Miller. The reality is we live in a, a changing world, um, increasingly digital and connected. How do you see that playing out in the industry? So I think what's, what's really important is, um, you know, if I go back in my AMR days to the, to the first few PLM implementations that were going on in the process industry, so I'm not talking about the discrete industry, they tended to be separate, and, and they kept them deliberately separate because they didn't want to confuse the ERP deployment and the PLM deployment. However, if you really think about the progression of the end-to-end -end supply chain, what is a business in an end-to-end -end sense if it's not launching products and services? So I think what's eventually happened is product data, innovation, translation of innovation into products, and how else do you launch a, a product if it's not going to get launched in the supply chain? So what, what tended to happen is companies would develop products and then they'd hand them off to the supply chain and let the supply chain figure out how to get it. And I think we saw a lot of failures and then they wonder why stuff doesn't arrive on time, uh, it doesn't come with the right products, sometimes the specifications aren't met because we've got all these materials that get recalled. So, so I think the bottom line, Kerry, is that PLM is suddenly um, become the growth, because supply chain's a growth engine and products are the growth engine for the business, it's very logical to see the two together. So it sounds like a lot is changing rapidly and depending on how a company reacts, responds or readies itself for these changes could have a profound impact on its ability to compete going forward. One of the things that um, we've seen and perhaps this is as response is organizations tending to now look at PLM and the supply chain is truly an end-to-end -end product value chain. Why do you see that emerging? Well, so there's no better example. So I was also a partner with Accenture for four years, and one of my last uh, um, engagements was with, with a big pharmaceutical company. And I had the R&D people in the room, the tech transfer people in the room, manufacturing people, commercial planning people. And I said, you're all one part of one product value chain. And they all looked at me blankly. Now, the reality is what becomes a molecule is made in a manufacturing plant. What you make in a manufacturing plant, you may ship to different geographies, put them in different boxes with different inserts, but it's all one product value chain. So that's what's changed. I think that the, the most exciting thing about cloud is that we take the complexities. I'm not saying the complexities of integration go away. But the fact that we have this one cloud architecture which collects data uh, and, and is used in the supply chain allows us to really fit the product and the launch of the product into the end-to-end -end supply chain. So if you go to leading consumer goods companies who see the end-to-end -end supply chain as the business operating model, well, the business operating model includes all of its products. So therefore, mm -hmm. why is PLM not an integral part of all of the supply chain development? And I think that you know, it was very interesting at a scope conference that I presented at last week. Somebody said, you know, there's two reasons why supply chain demand driven hasn't caught on to the extent it has. And there's only been about a 20% uptake. The bottom line is leadership alignment and the understanding of what an end-to-end -end supply chain is. And it's not a traditional supply chain. Product lifecycle management, all the elements of that, so product data and, and innovation, et cetera we're always seen as managing the product set of the organization. Whereas supply chain was seen as taking costs out of the organization. Well, guess what? When you flip the supply chain model from inside out, which is order to cash, to outside in, which is translating demand, now suddenly you land up with how do I translate innovation? How do I translate new products? How do I consolidate and get better scale out of my product manufacturing facilities? Because I may consolidate it to four or five sites and, you know, take uh, um, sites out of the equation. So demand-driven is growth. 
it, it's what the business looks like. There are numerous examples of consumer companies who embarked on their end-to-end -end supply chain transformation looking at stockouts, for example, or shortfalls. And they ended up by giving billions of dollars back to the business because when you look from the outside in, in other words, the patient back, the buyer back, uh, at the end-to-end -end supply chain, you see problems that you didn't even know existed. Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden we have this chance to streamline product flows and product data and innovation as part of the end-to-end -end supply chain. Why do you think Oracle is different? What makes us so uniquely capable of delivering that value to our customers? I, I think it's because Oracle has a whole suite of supply chain solutions. Yeah, and you know whether they are some of them exist on premise today and others are hosted cloud and others are you know in the public cloud. I think that Oracle and, and I mean it's really one of the reasons I joined Oracle was because what I liked about Oracle is this is one engineered end-to-end -end cloud based supply chain solution. The supply chain is the business operating model, it's an architecture uh, and Oracle has spent many billions of dollars um, engineering all of our products to one cloud-based architecture. That is very, very exciting and that includes PLM. So we don't go out to the, some of the other PLM competitors and find that they're a standalone PLM product. Well, that just exacerbates the problem of trying to fit it into the supply chain, whereas for us it's part of the supply chain. Do you have any advice for PLM and supply chain leaders? I think one of the challenges is traditional supply chain thinking. So if you go into many companies and you ask the supply chain leader, are you responsible for product management? They'll probably say, no, we've got somebody that does that. You've got to start closing the organization gaps. Uh, you know, I had the privilege of working with Procter & Gamble and it was really interesting that the chief supply chain officer had the, the purview of all of the product management as mm -hmm. part of his supply chain transformation initiative. So that's suggestion number one. Um, so, so make it part of the supply chain organization. It doesn't need to lose its identity, but it needs to be part of the supply chain organization. The second point is pay really special attention to product data. We tend to see product data different to enterprise data. Right? So there's big master data management projects in the ERP domain, and then we've got product data management in the, in the PLM domain. We have to bring those two together. It's not something different. It's, it's exactly the same thing. And, and I would say the third one, and, and I get particularly excited about innovation management, and especially the way that Oracle has brought innovation management to market, because it has limited interdependencies. So I can go and deploy innovation management in the cloud. It's a short project. It allows me to manage my portfolio of initiatives, to, to manage my portfolio of innovation, to include it when I'm ready into the rest of the PLM and the rest of the, uh, um, the product lifecycle management and supply chain stuff. So I'm, I think it's, a, it's an absolute breakthrough. And, and I'm excited because I think companies choosing innovation management for the right reasons, which eventually integrates into the end-to-end -end supply chain cloud architecture, I think they're going to see huge benefits from the, from the investment. Well, that was Roddy Martin, VP of Supply Chain Management Cloud, Product Marketing, and Cloud Thought Leadership and Transformation. For more on the future of PLM and the supply chain, visit oracle.com slash PLM. Follow me on Twitter at Kara Jordan, and come to our Modern Supply Chain Experience 2017 in San Jose. Hope to see you there.